We are the true nut. Shit. Hey folks, welcome to my review of Stephen King's Doctor Sleep, the sequel to The Shining. Now, um, normally whenever I review a audiobook I listen to, I like to mention the narrator. Um, this time it was Will Patton. He did an excellent job. His voice was like smooth, muddy gravel in a good way. So most of this video is going to have spoilers in it. If you'd like to skip that section, you can click there. Um, you can just get my opinion on it, spoiler free. But, uh, if you're okay with spoilers, then buckle up, buckaroo, because here we go. So after the events of The Shining, Danny and Wendy, um, uh, and Dick Colloran, because remember, he's alive, they all just go live their lives. But Danny is still haunted by the, some of the ghosts from the Overlook Hotel. Remember, the Overlook was destroyed at the end of the book in The Shining. After Danny's been haunted by these, uh, ghosts, um, for a little bit, Dick ends up coming over and, uh, shows him how he can basically kind of, like, lock those ghosts up in a box in his head. Which, that would have been maybe useful knowledge whenever he was living at the Overlook Hotel, Dick Colloran, but, you know, at least he knows now. After he learns how to do that, uh, Danny grows up into Dan, and he kind of becomes, well... An alcoholic. Um, at the lowest point in his, in his life, uh, he wakes up next to a girl after a night of cocaine and drinking. He goes to steal from her purse. He sees her little boy. I forget how old he is, but like five or under. He comes out and he sees some cocaine on the table and he's like, Ooh, candy! And Danny's like, no, that's not candy, but I'm stealing this from your mom. And I'll never see you guys again. And he ditches them. He ends up moving to a new town, quits drinking, gets a job at this place called Teeny Town before he ends up working for a hospice under the alias Dr. Sleep. What he does as Dr. Sleep is, um... Well, when a cat comes in a person's room, he'll go in there and help him die. The person, not the cat. I know that sounds weird. That's that's what he does. They gave him the name Dr. Sleep. Dan also has this long-lost niece, who we don't know is his long-lost niece until, like, way later in the book. But remember, this is the spoiler section. Anyway, her name is Abra. She's got... Whoa, it got dark in here. But anyway, she's got, like, Professor X levels of The Shining. Meanwhile, these uni-tusk vampire people called the True Knot, who disguise themselves as regular RV folk, um, drive around from town to town, basically looking for little kids who have The Shining, torturing them until uh, their Shining leaks out of their body in the form of steam, which they then eat and murder the child and move on to the next town. One of the scariest parts in the book, actually, is when they kidnapped a young boy after baseball practice, and you just are there with him as they basically torture him to death. And Abra actually sees this, too, through the little boy's eyes. She wakes up having a nightmare one night, seeing what the little boy's seeing. The True Knot's location is uh, actually where the Overlook once stood, too. I, I mean, no, they said they go from town to town, but they have, like, a headquarters, you know? And that's in Colorado, where the Overlook was before it blew up. Now it's called the Overlook Lodge. The True Knot's leader, her name is Rose, and one day Rose and Abra find out about each other. Abra knows that Rose and Friends is the one who killed the baseball boy, and Rose knows that Abra's got some tasty, tasty shining, and she wants some of that, because uh, the True Knot's actually starting to die off. For some reason, uh, the baseball boy had measles, and when they ate him, they're also getting measles and dying. So they're figuring if they get uh, Abra's Shining, that would be enough to sustain them and heal them and, you know, keep the True Knot going. Well, Abra reaches out to Dan for help uh, because she knows that the True Knot is coming for her. Dan, her dad, her old pediatrician, and some old guy that Dan works with all end up teaming together to basically the whole kidnapping party that was sent for Abra... Uh, they take them down no problem. That is except for one guy. His name is Crow Daddy. He actually does end up kidnapping Abra for a little bit. But it's not that big of a deal. Because with the help of Dan, he and Abra use their psychic powers to make the guy blow his brains out. So, you know, no big whoop. Well, obviously this has made Rose mad. And then Abra and Dan decide that their next move is to go to Rose's turf and then just, you know, challenge them there. 
They basically kill everyone else in the True Knot pretty easily, along with the help of Abra's dead grandma and uh, Dan's dead dad, who is obviously Jack from The Shining. His ghost is, I guess, still at the Overlook Hotel, well, the Overlook Lodge, and he helps them out at the last second a little bit. Basically, after that, they live happily ever after. And though it wasn't a bad book by any means, it's maybe my least favorite Stephen King book so far. Keep in mind, I've only read four. The scariest part was probably, like I said, when the True Knot was killing the baseball boy. Another scary part was when Danny, as a boy, saw the girl from 217 in his own bathroom. Other than that, the book really wasn't scary. I didn't feel like the characters were ever in any real danger because they were so powerful, uh, especially Abra. The True Knot, uh, oh yeah, when I said they had a unitusk, their monster form is they just get this big old tusk on, in the middle of their face. Uh, it, I, could, I, I tried real hard I, in a bunch of different ways. That just didn't look that scary to me in my imagination. Maybe the movie that's coming out will make that scary, but I, you know, I'm, I'm actually really interested in seeing how the movie's going to adapt this because it seems like that is a sequel to Stanley Kubrick's The Shining rather than the original book. Because uh, in the trailer I've seen, the hotel is still standing and stuff. And, you know, obviously that's not the case with the book. All in all, I can't give it a bad rating. Um, you know, it's a pretty solid sequel to The Shining. Like, you get to know what happened with Danny and everything. Like, it's not poorly written or anything. It's just... It, with how scary The Shining is, I wanted more scares out of this, but instead of being a horror book, it's more of a supernatural thriller, which is fine, but again, in my personal opinion, I like reading scary stuff. That's just me. The most satisfying part of this was definitely Danny's story arc. When it comes down to it, the book's really about facing your inner demons, figuratively and literally. I guess, and this is my personal opinion, if, if yours is different, cool, but... I've got to give it, like, a 5 out of 10. I could take it or leave it. You know, it's not a bad book. That sounds like it's a low rating, but 5 is, like, perfect middle ground. Anything above a 5 is good. Anything below a 5 is, you know, getting a little worse. But 5 is, you know, solid. But, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I might read Misery next. I'm also thinking about reading Jurassic Park, taking a break from Stephen King for a little bit. If you have an opinion, let me know in the comments. If not, I'll just I'll decide on something. All right, but thanks again. You guys have a great day.